Welcome everyone! Today we will be talking about tutorial 10 and tutorial 10 is about adversarial attacks. So lecture 10 will deal with generative adversarial networks, so where you will already see the idea of adversarial um, training and maybe also adversarial attacks. However, here we really want to focus on attacking now a network. So what does that mean? Well, you know we have seen now in the previous notebooks a lot of strong models that can do very well on classification tasks and regression tasks. And the question is how robust or how stable these models are. So we take usually a training set, right, and test it on a test set, and we see the performance. That's quite nice. But can we actually now construct images that are kind of fooling our network? And this is kind of the idea of adversarial attacks. So nothing else. Uh, here, for example, a small example. Um, the first research group uh, looking into this was in 2014, and they took a very deep neural network, uh, deep CNN, I think actually ResNet, trained on ImageNet, so on this very large image data set. And if you take this panda, uh, which is also from the data set, our model would have classified it as a panda with a confidence, so with a class probability of about 60%, so that's fairly good. However, if you add a little bit of noise, which is carefully constructed, and we will look into what is that noise actually, you can fool the network into thinking this is a gibbon with a very high confidence. All through every human who looks at it is still a panda. Right? As humans, we have troubles to actually distinguish these two images. For a network, they seem to be something completely else. This shows you already a danger and the issue um, of neural networks, because imagine you now want to apply a neural network in a serious application. For instance, uh, autonomous driving. In autonomous driving, you have, for example, a camera on your uh, car mounted, which looks in front, and you do semantic segmentation, meaning that you actually assign every pixel of the image a class, so that you get an idea of where pedestrians are, where cars are, and so on. So, for instance, if you take here this image, a usual prediction could be something like this. However, if you add a little bit of noise, so a human would now have troubles to actually distinguish these two images, the prediction of a model is completely different. And the issue is if, if a um, car would not have any other uh, devices like a LiDAR sensor to actually detect objects in front of it, you could fool a network like this and the car would think there are no pedestrians in front of the world so it can just drive. And that is quite a serious issue. Um, therefore, it is very important to actually be aware of adversarial attacks, what they can cause, and why we have them in our new networks. And this is what we deal here in our uh, small tutorial. So first, as usual, we can import our standard libraries, and we also have a few pre-trained models, although not really models here, and also a data set that we download. So the first part we look at is how do we set up? So in general, the idea of this notebook is to show you how you can perform adversarial attacks and how easy it is to fool a network, actually. Therefore, we will take here a very deep network, which is already pre-trained uh, pre on ImageNet, and we'll try to attack this network. So we will use here a ResNet 34, uh, so already architecture you might have already seen. We just loaded here from uh, Torch Vision and set all of its parameters uh, to false because we don't want to train it and then down, uh, prepare here a data set. So the data set we use here is a smaller version of ImageNet. So ImageNet usually has a million images. However, here we don't use a million images. We just scale it down to uh, five images per class, which is then already enough to perform uh, attacks on our data set. And this is what we here um, provide you. To first start, we can look at what is the evaluation performance of a dataset, uh, or of a model. So what does that mean? We can just run now the whole dataset through our model and check actually what accuracy we get, just to ensure that we get a, a reasonable performance and we don't have already a bad network. Um, we print here two scores, so the top one error means basically one minus the accuracy, which is then the accuracy would be 81% here which is okay, but not perfect. However, if you imagine ImageNet has a thousand classes, this is already a serious hard task. And if now our model always predicts the true label as a second highest class, 
It performs well, but the accuracy doesn't show that. This is why you usually also have a top 5 error, meaning that how often is the label actually not in the top 5 of the predictions of a model. And that uh, is usually here, as you can see, around 4%. Note that this score is actually lower than on the real test set of ImageNet, because these uh, images here have been sampled randomly from the training validation test set to also show you that we can fool a network on its own training data. We can also show some predictions so you get familiar with what is the data set and what are actually the classes we are looking at, um, which we perform down here. So we just take a small batch, run it through and show you some predictions. So uh, we have here images of, of the size 224 times 224, and here I plot in the bar plot the top five predictions. So you see the two classes tangent, it also predicts very well. And in all of the examples here, we actually perform quite well with the network, but it also predicts the uh, label always as the highest class. And we will now try to actually fool the network to get the highest class out of it here. Adversarial attacks in general have uh, the same purpose in the sense that if we want to really fool a network, we try to adapt the input, for example, the input image, by adding slight noise or doing some other small changes so that the output is something else than we actually uh, thought the network should do. So for example, we would try to alternate the input so that instead of predicting the image as a goldfish, we want to predict it as a school bus, although it's still, um, it's still a goldfish for a human. There are different ways of doing that. In general, we distinguish between two parts in our adversarial attack, namely a white box attack and a black box attack. So white box attack basically means that we have access to the model, we have the weights, we can calculate gradients in the model, etc. While the black box attacks are more difficult in the sense that they view the model as a black box. So you can put in an image and get the output, but you cannot evaluate the gradients or even the parameters you don't know. In this tutorial, we will mostly focus on white box attacks just because they are easier to implement and already show the danger of adversarial attacks. In addition, actually GANs, so generative adversarial networks, you see in lecture 10, can be also seen as adversarial white box attack on the discriminator. So the first method we look at is the fast gradient sign method. So this was already developed in 2014 and has a very simple idea. So we take an input image in, so any input image that we have, for example, for our data set, run our model, and then instead of trying to minimize the loss for the correct label, we actually try to maximize the loss and calculate the gradients back to the image. So we basically get then gradients for the input image in the sense of how should I change it so that the prediction is not my label as we don't want to change the whole image, because then uh, even a human cannot recognize the original image, we do it actually by just slightly changing every pixel, meaning that we add some noise here with a factor of epsilon and just use the sign of the direction of the gradients. Meaning if we know, okay, for this pixel, actually if we increase the value, we reduce um, use our output probability for the two label this is where we will then change the pixel value to. So this way we actually generate noise, which we add to the original image. The noise is usually so little that the human cannot detect it. However, we will actually manipulate the output quite a lot. How we can do it, so implemented it here, it's basically exactly the method I just described. You take an input image, predict the output, calculate the loss, and now try to maximize the loss and return it. We can just try it out on a few images and check actually what uh, predictions we get. So the left one here is the original image. The right one is now the adversarial image and this is the noise. We added, of course, with a much smaller factor. And you see that the predictions actually change a lot. So previously, all of the images were classified correctly. And now you see that actually none of the images have a, a true label in the top five. Also, if we look at these two images, it's hard to even tell that there's a difference. This shows how we can actually fool a network 
with so little um, what the human cannot even see. We can also uh, test the whole model, so on the whole data set, so I push now every image uh, through the model, calculate the noise, add the noise and check where it was zero, add accuracy, and there we will already see that the model is much worse, so that the attack is very effective actually. So if you remember previously we had a top 1 error of 19% and a top 5 error of 4%. Now we have a top 1 error of 93%, meaning that our accuracy went from 80% to less than 7%. And the top 5 error is also very high, meaning that with this simple noise, which is very small, so this epsilon of 0 0.02 means that we just changed one pixel value. So from 127 we go to 128. And this is already enough to fool the network so massively. That's quite surprising and shows that even this simple method can uh, manipulate a network a lot.